Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Well, meteorological spring has started in the Northern Hemisphere. That's the first day of March. By meteorological definition, springtime is March, April, and May. So we are now starting springtime. However, the vertical equinox doesn't come up until 20 days later on the 20th of March. So what's going on with the month of March, astronomically speaking? Well, we have a lot of things to talk about. We still have nebulosity to look at up in the sky. And now the Earth's revolution around the sun is taking us away, looking away from the galactic center out into the depthness of space. And there you find galaxies. And I'm talking about hundreds, no thousands, no, million, no, billions, of, perhaps, trillions of galaxies out there. Well, a lot of them are becoming in view right now. And for the next three months, March, April, and May is known as galaxy season. And that's where we're gonna start looking at the galaxies. Also, this is a good time of the year to look at the things called globular clusters, spherical areas of stars that are bounded by gravity. And they exist to the north and south of the galactic core and uh, they, they, they're just amazing to look at. We're gonna talk about that. And also, what else is coming up this month? A total lunar eclipse, visible in all of North and South America. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Let's take a look at the sky at night in the month of March. Before I begin the tour, one thing I would like to say is that all the images that you'll be seeing are from the heavenly backyard, and most of them are from this telescope right here, the Celestron 11-inch Edge HD telescope. Uh, some of the other images are taken from the Orion Eon 130-millimeter refractor. That's on the other side of the garden. And, uh, well, for example, the Trio and Leo, or the Leo triplet, I'll be showing you that. That's from that. So, with that being said, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at some of the dates for the month of March 2025. Obviously, on the first day of March, that is known as meteorological beginning of spring. In meteorology, spring is defined as the month of March, April, and May. Now, on March 9th, we begin daylight saving time across most of the country, and that'll begin at 2 a.m. Sunday, March the 9th. Spring forward one hour and lose an hour of sleep. On March 13th and the 14th, a full lunar eclipse across all of North America, Central America, and South America. And I'll have more information about that coming up a little bit later in the video. On March 20th, that's the vernal equinox. And in, for the Northern Hemisphere, that is the beginning of the calendar spring. And that'll be at 5.01 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That is when the apparent position of the sun crosses the equator, traveling from the Tropic of Capricorn up toward the Tropic of Cancer, or the beginning of summer, which will be in the middle of June. On March 25th, the bright star in the western sky, the planet Venus, will reach inferior conjunction. That is, it'll be directly between the Earth and the sun and disappear from view. Ironically, Venus, the goddess of love, was at its most brilliant this cycle on Valentine's Day a couple weeks ago on February the 14th. Venus will reappear as the morning star sometime in April. Looking at the planets, as I just mentioned, Venus has been dominating the western evening sky extremely bright, the third brightest object in the sky, only to be outshone by the sun and the moon, but it'll be leaving the evening sky by the middle portion of the month of March and then reappearing later on in April as the morning star. And just below Venus, low in the western sky, are the planets Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Above Venus, the planet Jupiter still shines brightly and will continue to shine throughout the entire month of March going into April. And above Jupiter is the ruddy red planet Mars. Mars was quite bright earlier this winter, but it's continuing to dim now as the Earth and the orbit of Mars continue to separate the two and the distance from Mars from Earth continues to increase, hence the light dims from Mars. 
March is also a season of globular clusters. Those are spherical conglomerations of hundreds of thousands of stars bound together by gravity, and they exist above and below the galactic plane. And they are also known as the portion of the galactic halo. Now, there are several beautiful globular clusters to view throughout the month of March and also in April and May, but uh, you can start seeing them in March as well. M3, Messier number three in Canes via TC. This cluster is not quite as old, but still old. Uh, it's 11.4 billion years old. In contrast, the sun is about, what, four and a half billion years old. So this one's about 11.4 billion years old. It's about 33,900 light years above the galactic plane, and it contains about 500,000 stars. This is one of the finest northern hemispheric clusters. And through the telescope, the cluster displays a bright central core. And then you have Messier 13, the Great Hercules Cluster, also described by astronomers as the most magnificent globular cluster visible in the northern hemisphere. It's about also 11.65 billion years old, but it's a little bit closer, about 22.2 light years away, and it has about 400,000 stars. It was first discovered by Edmund Haley back in 1714. It is one of the brightest clusters shining with a magnitude of 5.8. Just to give you an idea, the lower the magnitude, the brighter the object. Venus, for example, is minus 4.6 right now. All right, let's see. M53, Messier 53, is one of my favorites in Coma Berenices. It is about 12.7 billion years old. It is one of the most outlying globular clusters, being about 60,000 light years from the galactic center and about 58,000 light years from our own solar system. It contains about 500 thousand stars or half a million stars. This cluster is dominated by first generation stars containing only the raw elements of the universe, unlike the other globulars, which are mostly a mix of first and second generation stars, those containing light metals formed from the recycled materials from the first generation stars. Well, in contrast, our sun is a third generation star and that contains the recycled elements from the first and second stars containing heavier elements. March is also known as the beginning of the galaxy season. Why is that? Well, because as the Earth revolves around the sun, during certain times of the year, it's looking at different angles within the galaxy. Now, during the summer months, the orbit of the Earth has the nighttime view looking into the core of the galaxy. So we see all this nebulosity and all these stars and many more stars up in the sky where during the spring months, the Earth is over on the other side looking out from the center of the galaxy into the depthness of space. And that's where we see tons and tons of galaxies, as I mentioned uh, at the start of this video. So let's talk about a few. There are many, but let's talk about a few. One of my favorites is the triplet of galaxies in Leo. They compose of Messier 65, 66, and New General Catalog, or NGC 3628 known as the Hamburger Galaxy. And if you look at it, there's a picture of it right there. I took this just the other night. Uh, it kind of looks like a hamburger, if you ask me. That uh, contains about 200 billion stars. Uh, it's about 35 million light years away. And Messier 65 and 66, I took this one just uh, the last night. And they both contain, again, about 200 billion stars each. By the way, the Milky Way contains about 200 to 250 billion stars. So it's about the same size as our own Milky Way, but there's three of them going together here and interacting with each other. Here's one, Messier 101, also known as the Northern Pinwheel Galaxy in Ursa Major, or the Big Bear, also the portion of the Big Dipper. It is about 21 million light years away, a giant spiral galaxy containing about a trillion stars. Amazing how many stars in just that one galaxy alone. Not too far away in the sky is Messier 63. 
Well, this fits the Heavenly Backyard Garden theme. It's called the Sunflower Galaxy, and it's near the Big Dipper in Keynes via TC. It is about 27 million light years away, and it contains about 400 billion stars, about twice the number of stars as our own Milky Way galaxy. All right, and then one of the favorites for many, and this looks great in a small telescope, uh, Messier 51 also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. And this is near the Big Dipper in Keynes via TC as well. Uh, it has a smaller galaxy that is being absorbed into it. That's known as NGC or New General Catalog 5195. They're about 31 million light years away. And again, this pair of galaxies looks like a question mark to some uh, people uh, is... Uh, very viewable with a small telescope. So you don't need a massive telescope uh, like I have out in the ba Heavenly Backyard Garden. You can view this with a small telescope. So the galaxies, these are just a few of my favorites. All these I took from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. One of the main events for the month of March is going to be the full lunar eclipse across all of North, Central, and South America. And uh, the lunar eclipse will begin on the evening of March the 13th, but almost March 14th, because it'll be at uh, just before midnight, beginning with the what's called the penumbral portion of the eclipse, uh, just before midnight, March 13th. So most of the event will be after that on March the 14th. And the eclipse begins at 1.09 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then the totality will begin at 2.26 in the morning and will continue till 3.31. Now, while the moon is in this portion of the eclipse, the Earth shine reflecting back onto the moon causes the moon to reflect that light back to the Earth once again, and it shows off as a reddish glow. So you might call it a bloody color. And a lot of people will say this is called a blue, not a blue moon, but a blood moon. And so watch for that on the night of March 13th, the morning of March 14th, uh, if you have the opportunity and the sky is clear, of course. Uh, look for the blood moon uh, between 226 and 331 in the morning during the total lunar eclipse. And the eclipse will end at 447. March is always an exciting time here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden, not only from an astronomy standpoint, but for the vegetation standpoint. The garden is waking up from its winter sleep and things are starting to grow, also starting to get some blooms already with much, much more of those to come. And I'll have a lot more videos on that, on, well, a little bit on this channel, but more so on my Weather and Nature channel and Pat's Heavenly Backyard Garden channel right here on YouTube. Meanwhile, enjoy the March skies across your area. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders. And they're all in the sky near you in your own backyard. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. Something else that comes with March in his, this area, gnats. They're all over the place. <laughs>